Time now to talk winners and losers on Wall Street. Financial expert Rob Black joining us this morning on this first day of April as we start off the second quarter. We had a great first quarter, Rob, with the S&P doing better than 10%. And now I'm looking at the markets are deeply red with the Dow off by more than 200 points. What gives? Yeah, the Dow is um, the bigger of the losers today. The S&P, the NASDAQ are performing much better. Um, it is a first day and a lot of times it's put the stuff from the first quarter away. Great quarter, S&P 500 up 10%. Russell started to catch up the mid cap. And today is kind of like a new day for the uh, um, uh, mutual fund managers. Mm. They have to every 90 days tell people what they own and how much of it they own. So they want to look smart. And on April 1st, they're able to start new for the next 90 days. So there could be a little rebalancing going on, but I don't I don't get that vibe. Um, Friday, the PCE inflation gauge was okay. 2.8% historically inflation is between 2 and 4%. So this is okay. But the Fed wants it down to 2%. Jobs report comes out on Friday. So we've got some things to look at for. Of note, I want to bring this up, that mm. gold's at 2245 an ounce at an all-time high. It's beating the S&P 500 since 2022. Now, keep in mind, the S&P 500 had a really rough 22. Mm. So that's not terribly fair. But Mr. T must be happy today. He pities the fool. <laughs> gold. Um, I don't own any gold. Won't own any gold. Right. But apparently a lot of people are owning gold, and they're doing quite well. Wow. Okay. Not doing quite well, though, apparently is um, X. Am I reading this right? Fidelity's come out with a new valuation for X at just north of $5 billion. Musk bought this thing for $44 billion not too long ago. October 22, uh, he bought it, and now it's worth $5.2 billion, down from $44 billion. Fidelity owns a stake because they gave Elon Musk money uh, for the uh, rights to own shares of the company. So they are writing down the valuation. Still no signs of a turnaround. Month to month, it continues to slip. Uh, makes me feel a little bit better that I didn't burn $39 billion Ooh. by an X. Not like that I had it, right. but uh, Elon Musk and his definition or his version of free speech is, is causing a lot of advertisers to continue to flee. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's talk a bit about Gmail. My introduction to Gmail years and years ago was a friend of mine had Gmail and back then you could only be invited into it. So he sent me an invitation and I set up my account. I didn't realize it until I see the headline this morning, Gmail 20 years old. And for those under 35 um, years old, they don't understand how revolutionary this was to you and I. Oh yeah. We were using Yahoo Mail. We were using Hotmail. We were paying for AOL. Um, and with AOL, well, with Yahoo and Hotmail, you could only store about 60 emails. Mm. With one gigabyte that Gmail gave you, you would save 13,500 forever and ever, essentially. Yeah. Um, it came out on April Fool's. A lot of people thought it was an April Fool's joke because Google's been known to do some April Fool's jokes. Um, people would, you know, it was invite only. So people were selling their invites on eBay for 250 bucks. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> 1.8 billion users of Gmail. I use Gmail, you use Gmail. Mm -hmm. Every email you've ever sent me, James, is, is there in a long form, and right. I can search them for my pool service. It's all there, and there, that's something called sequencing, and that saves a lot of time. Before we had to find, I think James emailed me last week or some the week before, um, searching your emails, brand new thing. So if you want, if you have a pool that you need to be cleaned and you have it cleaned in a couple of years, you can type in pool in your Gmail, and it'll show you your last bill from who you paid. Um, and the speed was just it was remarkable about how much it saved us. So mm -hmm. I think it's worthy of note. This was revolutionary, and this is where they're going. All those Gmails on pool services and restaurants and vacations that you're on, mm -hmm. James, that's all gold for AI intelligence. And um, Google will be a player. Microsoft right now has the land of AI, yeah. and NVIDIA has the hardware semiconductors. But Google's coming. It's impressive. It's impressive. And how time flies, too. <laughs> All right, uh, our final story this morning. I want to talk about the, uh, the total eclipse that's coming up on, I think it's the 8th of this month, now that we're in April. That's actually big business for a lot of folks across the states anyway that are going to see it. Yeah, Indiana, a state I would never think about going to for tourism, is going to pull in 500,000 tourists. The solar eclipse of my heart, nope, it's moon in front of the sun for a few moments on that April 8th, affecting 13 states with a sliver of land through those 13 states. They're going to do quite well. Four million people are going to travel for the eclipse mm. to the zone of totality. That sounds great. <laughs> the average person will spend 400 to $500 in their travels. Hotels are booked in Dallas, Indianapolis, Cleveland, Rochester. 
Uh, restaurants are going to pull in an extra $685 million. Retailers, about $1.1 billion. Rentals and hotels, uh, places to stay, $810 million. Now, think about this, James. If you and I are spending $685 million, not you and me, but the collective, right. at a restaurant, that means the restaurant workers are making more money. So if you add it all up, we're going to spend about $1.62 billion directly mm -hmm. on this eclipse. But when you start adding into the employees of service companies, they're making more money. They'll spend more money. It's a $6 billion total eclipse. And that's pretty cool for the economy. That is incredible. Absolutely. And then yeah, lastly, that's, that's Taylor Swift ask. Right. Not that big, but it's close. close. Uh, uh, and lastly, I had some friends go to see um, Godzilla versus Kong over the weekend. They were kind of mixed on it. They didn't think it was the best thing in the world, but I guess it came out big uh, over the weekend box office. Did you see it? I did not. I dropped yeah. my kid off. He no longer wants to see movies with me. He's 13 years old and he's got four friends. They spent the money. <laughs> $80 million, second biggest opening of the year behind Dune 2. Um, so you're going to see another Godzilla Kong movie. And, um, you know, I saw the last one with my son. And yeah. I really, those are fun for me. Um, not too much thinking, just a lot of anim uh, special effects that are really, really top notch. Yeah. I can't. I haven't seen it yet. I think I want to, but I want to see Ghostbusters first. I think that's already in its second or third weekend. Anyway, read the that, reviews. That came in. Read second. the reviews. Uh, I know. I know. I know. But I, I still want. Fair to enough. See. Fair enough. I still want to see. All right, Rob. Thank you as always. And again, we're going to chat with Rob tomorrow. So let him know if there's a story, a company you want him to talk about. Reach out to him on social media. He's happy to chat. Email him directly too. You got his address there. Rob at robblack.com.